What's up, everybody? It is Saturday and it is 11 a.m., so you know what time it is. It is time for Murals in the Market Live. How's everybody doing today? I'm Jason. I'm with Ride Detroit. I am the official tour guide for Murals in the Market. So before we get into this, just to let you know, we do do tours of Murals in the Market. We do hour and a half long walking tours and we do two hour biking tours. If you want to know the difference between the two, hit me up on the internet and we can talk about it, all right? We got a crazy good one today. Oh, that's sun. I'm going to turn. I mean, we always have good ones, but today you get a special one. Oh, I was about to get it. I, I got to go. I, I'm so excited that I'm skipping. Let me go back here. Let me give a special thanks to Remy Ruff for last week. Last week, all the way from London, went live with me. Every I got to stop saying it. I always say it was one of the best ones, but they're all good. So I'm removing one of the best from my vocabulary. Remy Ruff, go check it out. If, if you want to see it, it's through the uh, Instagram of Murals in the Market. You can go there. And I now have a YouTube page where you can go check out all my past videos from Murals in the Market. I've got some e-bike tips because I do work at an e-bike store, Electric Avenue Bikes, 3613 Woodward, which we do do the e-bike tours out of, of Murals in the Market. Hey, Bonnie. It's one of my regulars right there. Got to say hey. Amy's right there. Um, this week, man, you guys get a special, special, special one. Every week, I'm like, Let's, how can we kick this one up? And this week, we got a twofer. All right? This week's guests are... Let's see if I check my camera. Well, let's get this thing turned around. Boom! Michael. Going Michael, because it's more Googleable. <laughs> Polakowski. And Ed Ehrman, what's up, fellas? What's happening, Jason? So, what makes this one awesome is not only are these guys two of the artists that are in murals in the market, and we'll talk about their murals, but these guys not only work together, but went to school together. So there is a synergy here that you are not even ready for. So, I usually get started. We'll touch briefly on this, but Ed, how did you get started in... Where, you know, when you were a kid, you said, I want to be an artist. When did that bug happen? Well, actually, I went to school first to become a journalist. Uh, I wanted to ask questions. I wanted to get down to the heat of things. Kind of like what you do, Jason. Uh, <laughs> I don't know get down Walter to the heat Cronkite of was like my, my idol as a kid. You know, I, I saw him like in, in war, you know, like going and, and finding the real truths. And when I got to school... I realized that journalism wasn't going in that direction. Mm -hmm. So instead of writing for BuzzFeed, I came home, I got my portfolio together, and I'd always been into art, and I just worked at it, worked at it, and then I went to CCS. Okay. And that was like my trajectory. It was like, I have, to, I have to do something that's, you know, passionate for me. Okay, okay. Michael, how about you, brother? Um, I, as a kid, grew up Dearborn, Detroit area. Um, always skated, always did graphics on my skateboard, always had friends who were in bands, um, just doing record covers for them, doing skateboard graphics for my friends, selling those. Um, and then I had like a high school art instructor who like first year of my senior year was like, yo, you're going to go to CCS, right? And like that was like the moment where I was like, whoa, like I could go to CCS with all of this. I could do something with like this art. So that same day I went to the, like my counselor and dropped a ton of like math classes, dropped all my science classes, and just took a ton of <laughs> took a ton of art classes, learned to paint, was horrible back then, and then slowly put together a portfolio, went to CCS. Um, I knew about 1X Run because I had seen them, I think, in like maybe a juxtapose ad or something. And like back then, like that was that they were like my like my heroes, my idols. They were, you know, doing doing what I like what I like with my kind of art. And then after CCS, I ended up working with them, and here I am. Okay, so fast forward, you guys are deciding you want to be artists. When did you guys first meet at CCS? First day. First day, yeah. So, <laughs> this was the first person I met at CCS. I, yeah, I literally sit down at a table with like three other guys, and then Ed and I started talking. We had like maybe no classes together at first, None, yeah. and then we just always ended up kind of circling back around one another. I pretty much hated everything he told me, yeah. and I was like, this guy, I really don't want to associate Sworn with enemies. him. <laughs> 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 and, 
has. So when did that change? I mean, was there never something? Has. It never <laughs> has. It never has. So you guys go to CCS, go through all those years together, disliking each other's work, and then you guys end up working together at one time's run. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how did that happen? Um, Craig Hicka at the time. I ran into him in a gallery. He's like, yo, I need people for murals in the market. I'm like, this is the best opportunity I've ever had. I was working in advertisement at the time. I basically like stopped all of that and then went into the interview the next day. They're like, we need people. I threw them Ed's name and then I started working there at the festival. And then that turned into assisting on other artists murals, helping out with their shipping team or just whatever they needed. Um, and then here we are. I mean, Ed works there full time now. Yeah, I was actually working a sales job. I was a printer salesman. <laughs> a printer salesman. I had like started at this company and I was a digital artist and they moved me into printer sales because I mean, if you have a brain and you can speak to people, you can sell printers. And that's kind of you. Yeah, that's kind of me. <laughs> Half a brain at least. So yeah, I was, I was working and then Mike texted me and he's like, hey man, I know you've been like itching to get into murals more because I did a, a giant octopus over by the new arena and like I had spent all summer like doing the nine to five and then going to the wall and painting and then he texted me and he was like dude if they're looking for people to help out with this festival like are you interested and I'm like yeah let me check and I went and talked to my boss and I was like I'm putting my two weeks in man. <laughs> and I quit my job like on the spot I was like, this is too big of an opportunity to not uh, to not take it. But it was at the time, like, they were like, we're going to hire you guys for, like, two weeks. Like, that's how long the festival is. So we, like, we just both, like, kind of, like, shut everything else down in our life. And we're like, all right, well, this will probably work out. I guess. <laughs> where this goes. <laughs> and kind of did. They're like that. Rula and Jesse definitely instill some sort of belief in you when they're like, hey, man, we got this thing going on. Sure. Like, let's give it a try, you know. Yeah. So... Working together all these years, has it created some type of a synergy when you guys are at the office? Yeah, sure. yeah. I would say like we bicker a lot, yeah. uh, but it's like it's probably because you know when you when you want to get better at art and you're looking to like enhance what you're doing, you have to learn from others, and you may not like the things that you're learning from other people, but like it's still gonna make your art better. And I defer to Ed for like everything that he knows. Like we we give one another a lot of crap for. You know, just being competing and being competitive with what we do. But like at the end of the day, he knows way more than I do about like a lot of murals. And like you know, he can go to any mural and be like, "Yo, we have to use this equipment, this boom lift, this, that, and the next thing." So there's definitely like a trust in one another and what our skill sets are at this point. And did you develop those skills working with murals, or was this something you knew coming to the you know when you came into this? Well, well, yeah, a little bit of both. While we were at CCS. Uh, we had a really good class called Beyond the Portfolio, and it was kind of highlighting what you wanted to do after you graduated. Uh, shout out to Laura Parloff, because she had like the best like class for that kind of like business etiquette. And what she taught us was like look into the thing that you really want to do and research the hell out of it. And at the time, that thing for me was like working in advertisement, and then I took the class with him, and I'm like... That sounds better. That sounds like more fun. <laughs> My idea was I wanted to paint murals. Like, yeah. I just wanted to paint like huge, huge things because it's a, you're giving back to the community and everybody around can see uh, the fruits of your labor, yeah. you know? And um, then I think once we came to Murals in the Market and then all the projects that we work on with 1X Run and all the uh, special projects, like it's kind of just throwing gasoline on a fire of like everything you know, you know a little bit of, and then you just like... It, spins out from there so we've learned yeah. way more in the last two years and i think I, you know it's that hands-on experience you know yeah. so talking about hands-on let's get into the murals we'll come back to some other stuff but michael let's start with yours right here all right all right so talk to me about it yeah so at the time i and i still am a little bit like a big theme in my work is um technology um and i like kind of the retro futuristic vibe on a lot of my work um, and I wanted to just do something about how technology is kind of a lot about opportunity and like access to technology is kind of like, it's creating a lot of opportunities for work and it's creating a lot, a lot of opportunities to like connect with one another. I mean, we're doing something right now with like, you know, 
reaching out to people through this like this live podcast like where we can connect with people in like a new and new and unique way um so i just kind of wanted to present that in the most exciting way possible um so definitely like you know like presenting the computer as like this interesting object for everyone absolutely so what made you choose you know, I talk to some artists and they say, well, I chose these colors because of this. Was there any inspiration behind colors or anything? Or was this just off your head and this is what you just felt you wanted to do? Um, I definitely have like a really dialed in color palette. I mean, I know like I have like maybe five or six color palettes that I go to, you know, grabbing on the teals, the blues and the purples. That's like a big one for me because I know it kind of hits the, uh, it just conveys that idea. And so I think for me, color is kind of like, it kind of like goes hand in hand with like what you're trying to say. Um, so that's kind of where I was at with this. And I know I wanted to do the red and kind of have the, that color kind of pop. And like this, this mural, like the red was the last thing I did. And I, and I was like, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know how I feel about it. And everyone was standing around and right when I put the red on, like it was like, it just kind of like came alive. So I was like, you know, like really excited to have that as a part of it. Gotcha. So we're going to talk in a second about the synergy that sort of was created by all of these murals because we're going to start. Let's go walking around the corner. And as we're walking, Ed, talk to me about, you know, the planning on this because you're involved a lot with where murals go. So this building, uh, the old firehouse building, it is a museum for graffiti. Uh, a couple years back, all of these doors were open. None of these windows had uh, boards on them. And people could, could just come in there and paint. I mean, it's got years upon years of paint. And if they ever peel some of that back, I mean, it's gonna be a relic. Uh, to pigeon off of that, there is also a skate park in there. I mean, people come and skate and, and, and paint. And it is like, it builds a community in Eastern Market for people who necessarily won't get these walls mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know so it keeps it gives back to the people of detroit and the local uh groups so when we were planning this we kind of wanted to place all of our local artists who are cherished you know like they're the ones who build up this community they work on the festival with us you know artists don't always just do art they have to supply and demand other things so to get them into this we were like we're gonna put all of our artists here on this building and have like a big bar. So during the festival, there were like 12 of us out here and everybody was kind of working with each other, supplying paint back and forth. I mean, we had a guy come out with uh, the speakers and he was spinning some music. So it was like one big party and like all of the locals were, were jamming. So it definitely paid into the vibe having all the locals here as opposed to you know, other artists that might have been in other parts of the of the market. Right, 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 right. Absolutely. All right, Ed, man. So talk to me about your piece. All right, so I got a thing for birds. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I mean, I think it's a uh, an envy of flight. Uh, I think the, the, the forms and the shapes that they create are incredibly beautiful. Uh, I wanted to kind of give a little bit back the Eastern Market where we only have a certain kind of wildlife. I mean, the only bird in Eastern Market is a pheasant. So I wanted to bring something from, you know, like the, the river and uh, places that we have like a lot of lush environment. I wanted to bring it to here. And I think I, I, I think I nabbed it. <laughs> this is amazing, man. How long did it take you? Uh, so this is a little bit tricky because while I was working the festival, I also had to paint in the festival. Yeah. Um, so I would come back after I had some stuff done. Uh, it probably took me two, two, three days. Gee, so we, t I touched on it. So you guys work for one time's run, but you guys are also heavily involved in the planning of the actual festival. Yeah. So how does that play into what you're doing? You know, when you're thinking about something, I mean, is your brain just going nuts the whole time on other stuff? I mean, how do you stay focused on such a f big thing? planning <laughs> i mean it takes a lot of planning mike is a much better planner than i am uh he's got a schedule laid out he knows exactly when he's got to get stuff done to do so i'm more of like it's like the least artisty thing to have like 
uh, like task management software that you just like you put all your deadlines in. You know, every time a painting needs to get done. You know, when a mural is going to take you away from that. And you know, like you know, you know, you have a deadline a couple a year out and say, and like you just you got to get it done. And the only one holding you accountable to that is yourself. And you know, and then with the festival, it's kind of a little different. I do I do a little bit less than you do, but there's a ton of we have an amazing team. Um, like yeah. you said, Rula, Leah, I mean, they're the, the kind of, Rula's definitely the, the like, yeah, Rula, Rula. Here we go, here we go. Here's the cheerleading session. Every week, somebody, you know, we just got to start setting time aside. Because every week we talk about how Rula and Jesse and those guys really have, myself included, nurtured talent and really put people in a great position to succeed. I mean, you might as well go ahead and do it now, man. How do you... Talk to Ruler right now, you know. Right. What I mean, a lot of artists they say the freedom that they have when they come here. So when you you know come up with the concepts for your pieces, you're not told what to do, are you? We're just basically told that you can't put like anything offensive in it. <laughs> and that's it. That's do it. Do your best, you. Do your yeah. best thing. Like, Be the best person. For, that for Ed, that's birds, and for me, that's computers. Like that's the thing that like that speaks to us and like spoke to this like spoke to this little area. And like spoke to the community here and like we and it's like you're not the only one holding that burden like you, you have like nick pazana ivan montoya like all these other people who are like kind of representing a little bit of like what detroit is and what like michigan is and what this what the midwest is and it's like everyone's kind of like speaking to their truth in there and i think that's like one of the greatest things about this festival is like just how representative it is of like just so many different like what is detroit and like that's a completely yeah, I mean it's like a, this 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 building itself right now. After all these walls went up, and even like the graffiti that's on here, the wheat paste, uh, it's a microcosm of the art. I mean, like Mike said, it's like you have so many different artists coming from so many different backgrounds that it creates this image itself. Absolutely. So we talk. Um, about art being temporary because when I do the tours people always ask you know what happens and I say a lot of our art gets covered up but we talked a little bit about how these were constructed maybe in a little bit different way with the possibility of them being able to move right correct yeah the idea was um, that eventually they're gonna put windows in these in these holes so we wanted to make sure that like once that happens that these would be able to be removed and taken elsewhere to be showcased we don't want to ever see them go away right um but in the eventuality of it is, is like walls do get covered i mean eastern market is ever growing and always going to have a new wall put up i don't think any artist really gets butt hurt if you know the the wall gets covered because they'll get another wall yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so we talked a little bit about murals in the market people think that Murals in the Market is just here, but Murals in the Market and One Time's Run touches art everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, one Time pretty much gets their hands in every mural across the city in some way, shape, or form. I mean, we've countless, like, countless walls with Phil Simpson, uh, Southwest Freddy, Sheafy. I mean, we just supply... If it's just like, hey, she feel call me on a Tuesday and be like, yo, I need some more black paint. I don't have any black paint. Do you know anybody who's got black paint? And it's like, it's not too hard for me to go to the office, grab black paint, and come back. Yeah. Um, we do a ton of work with Quicken Loans. Uh, in the last couple of years, we did work with the city of Detroit on the rebeautification project. And the so every week we go through something. I hope everybody's still here. We had a little pause because these guys are, I don't want to say too hot, man. That was, so, <laughs> that was so corny. But yeah, this is such a hot interview. We
Yeah. Taking a piece from every one that failed, and then we ended up with like this great like piece at the end that we kind of projected, and like like even the way that he said like like the the, the order of how we're gonna do it, like I learned a lot from that. Yeah. Um, but also, I just would like to shout out to that that business who like just supplied us with rib tips and wings all day <laughs> for like two weeks. Yeah, we were fed for like two weeks. It was really nice to like. I mean, this is corner spot in the uh, northern part of Har Harman's, Ham Tramp, 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 uh, Harman's community, community Garden, community. I think it's called. Community Market. Yeah. And they're just like the best people to work with. They like, I mean, they have people hang out there all day. Like, it's just like a good, a good opportunity just to work together and like just eat good food. Yeah, he's, he's out there barbecuing every day. Like, you got so many people from the community coming in for lunch, dinner. I mean, it was just a really, really good experience to get out there and like see how your art is impacting people who see it every day. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's the most important thing about like doing mural work in the first place is like your work isn't just for yourself and it's not just my story. It's the story that's getting explained to everybody who walks by and everybody who has their own perception of what that mural is. Man, you know, you're you're taking my thunder, man. That's why the phone heated up because you literally <laughs> just answered the question I was about to ask and talk about how much murals are based in the community. People don't understand how, you know, you don't just come in and put art. You really do put all take all that into consideration when you're coming into a community or a neighborhood. You don't just put up your art. You're 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 involving everyone in that process. I think that's probably one of the most key things is like the I think I like to use the word responsibility and I think murals in the market and one extra uses that word a lot is like you're responsible to the community because they're not opting in to see this art you are putting it out there and you're saying and you as the artist and as the person working on that project you're doing your best to find the right artist and the right voice that speaks to that community and like that every artist kind of has their own voice and they can only really speak to that so I think there's like there's definitely a lot that goes into that absolutely yeah I think that's like the biggest thing is like that word responsibility is like you're responsible to do the research to make sure that you're putting something in the community that's reflective absolutely absolutely so all these artists every time I talk to them they're always talking about the new projects they're working on and I feel like murals in the market has really motivated a lot of people to start separate projects and do different murals what do you guys think the future or of mural projects are in the city oh god that is such a it's, it's really complicated that's an incredibly complicated question <laughs> well that's why i'm here to ask <laughs> you see you brought up walter cronkite man right, i mean yeah. i gotta go deep on something right. man uh i would say uh the city is starting to accept murals a whole lot more and i think it's because of what has happened in eastern market over the last five years i think uh They've seen the the effect that it has had. I mean, the development that goes on around buildings that have murals on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a it's an it's, it's an eye dragger. Absolutely. If you see a mural, you're gonna go by that building regardless of what's in the building. Mm -hmm. So the corporate sponsorship and like, the city is definitely signing on. But there's still like you know like Freddie talked about him. Like he just did a mural that was entirely community funded um, for like an amazing cause in Southwest. And, that was all just someone getting on the internet and saying like, "Hey, what do we? What, what would it cost to do this?" And like, I think there's still artists like, I mean, like Ed and I, we, we do a mural, and we end up with like maybe a couple hundred dollars of extra paint that we just you know accounted for. So we just have opportunities that like, if, if I get a wall, like it, it's kind of moving towards that where like artists are supported, and so we can do these projects that we kind of feel strongly about, or I can do a mural for like. A yeah, I might not be able to afford it otherwise, mm -hmm. or just a project that I really feel strong. So it's like it's it's definitely there's the support, but there's also the you know the organic part of that as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do you guys get a lot more calls from like? You know, corporate situations like, uh, you know, the bathroom at Antihero that the girls, you know, that Clown Tears did. I was talking to those guys and they said that due to that mural alone, they've had almost 400,000 hits on Instagram because people line up just to take their photo at the murals. Are you guys getting a lot more calls from entities like that? Yeah. Uh, businesses will reach out and ultimately they have their own ideas of what like needs to go on the wall so i don't necessarily like working with local businesses that much uh that's just my personal like not saying he won't not saying he won't 
I will. Okay, I'm his manager for a second. Not <laughs> saying he won't work uh, with them. But, like, I like to have the freedom to, uh, to, to tell my story, you know, and to take pieces from them and, like, kind of work it out for myself. Uh, city governments are where it's at. That's, like, if you're a mural artist and you're really looking to get into doing work uh, large, Look, look up your local city government because they always have money that comes in for that specific purpose and a lot of times it goes unused. Yeah. Um, so if you just come up with your ideas, come up with the space you want, look at it and submit it, go to your town hall meetings, like get involved. Yeah, and just advocate for art in your neighborhood. Yeah, just, like, be present. Be an advocate for yourself and like what you what it is that you want. Because like corporate sponsorship and like working with like small, I love working with small businesses too. Like, like, my first <laughs> I love making fun. Right, right. Uh, my first mural was for like a local deli, and like that was cool for me because like I grew up working at a deli. You know, like, <laughs> like, it was, then like that that gets a lot of hits for them and brings in businesses, and like that's Ernie's like market in uh, Oak Park, and like that's just really cool to be a part of that. But also like like what kind of what you're saying is like. You have to do the things that you feel strongly about, and like being an, and so that's where kind of I think art consultants maybe come in a little bit. Uh, Hire Leo Rudd. <laughs> gotcha. So let's talk. I mean, let's honestly, we we touch on that every week because there is a business aspect to all of this. There isn't just paint on walls. I mean, there's a fair amount of business that goes into this. Yeah. No, I I love working with art consultants who just like that's what they do, and then that's you know that goes back to Rula, and that goes back to a million other people in the city right now. Who, um, that they make it their business to place artists and a lot of the time they're advocating for what that artist wants to do so I just had a residency last year um, and I, I have I threw art consultants had opportunities to place those those paintings in businesses and place those in those buildings and those homes and stuff like that so like that's kind of like maybe the thing that you come into this not really knowing that that's the way this business works and it's really like intricate and kind of specific thing but once you kind of can speak that language and like kind of understand what working with those type of pe types of people is like yeah you can kind of advocate for yourself a little bit more and then i think the first hurdle in that too is just having work yeah like you have to work and good work and it has to be good <laughs> what's a common ask uh, for like local government, what would be the first how, like the first step if you were gonna get started? Uh, RFPs and RFQs, or re requests for proposals and re requests for quotes. That like a lot of local governments will just like put out blind calls. Yeah. Um, and you can there's like a ton of sites. I think Cafe Press or something Cafe like that. Cafe Press is really good for that. You um, can just go on and like and just cruise for like we we do that every now and then where we look for murals together and we just. You know, put out a ton of proposals, put out a ton of quotes. Yeah. And just like that, that, like you can get together with a team, like maybe get together with a consultant and you and them kind of put out a ton of requests. And like that could be just like your business model is like just hounding down those like those city governments who have, you know, donors and funding and they have the tax base for something like that. It's, uh, I, I know I had said like I don't really enjoy working with small businesses. He <laughs> uh, didn't mean that. I didn't, didn't no. mean it. I mean it. I mean in a sense it's not something that's enjoyable for me, but that's how I got my start in this in the first place. So it's the same concept. You as as a city government, you come up with a concept and then you approach the building owner. Uh, it's just as simple as knocking on doors. Yeah. You know, and talking to the right people. My senior studio for CCS was literally like I told my I went to class one day and my instructor and I was like, you know what, just for this class, like just go take the next six hours that you're gonna be in this class and just go to businesses. And I literally for six hours straight just walked around, drove around Detroit and just like, you know, basically asked for if the owner was there and that ended up being my first mirror. You know? Leaf and feather, I'm asking some, you know questions for them this is a good one. i mean it's kind of a weird one but not i mean it's not weird everybody wants to know this it's a weird how to answer a ask it and answer it but what should a muralist charge Ooh. yeah that's a tough one uh price per square foot that's a start that's a good start okay um you're always gonna get drowned on that um, um yeah start i think the like spectrum is like ten dollars a square foot to twenty dollars a square foot um but your first couple murals are gonna be Right, right. Cost of materials and like 
any other business, I wouldn't say it's like that, but that's just what murals are. Like Most of the time, you just do uh, cost of material. Yeah. Like somebody will pay for all of the cans that it takes to paint it. For your first couple. Yeah. yeah. Once you have like three under your belt, two under your belt, and you've kind of proven yourself, then you can start like saying, okay, $10 a square foot. And then you do a couple at that price point, And then you say, all right, now I'm 11, now I'm 12. And like you're trying to find those, those big pieces, like this one for Ed, that like, that's the proof of concept that your price per square foot has gone up. You know, and you're just trying to, and you want to be in that spectrum because you're, you're trying not to drown out all these other muralists and like trying not to like ruin their price experience. Right. So that's another thing. Right. So if you, if you find a business and they're looking for a muralist and they've approached you about it because they like your work um, and you get to the, the meat and potatoes of it and you find out that they're not going to be able to afford uh, your work and you're at this point in your game where you're like, I can't do a mural for that size. The best thing for you to do is reach out to your homies. you got to, got to, got to always throw jobs to your friends because it might not be a good fit for you but it's definitely going to be a good fit for somebody else. Yeah. Absolutely. And I have a ton of, like, even students at CCS who are, or, like, maybe younger muralists who, like, like they, they come to my studio, they hang out, and, like, we're doing exactly what we're doing now, where, like, I try to tell them how I got to where I'm at, and, like, I do the same thing with people who are two years further in their career, and just constantly be talking to the person who's on the next rung of the ladder, and then also, like, picking people up so that at the end, like, you know, your 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 friends are painting at a big festival, and you're there too, and like everyone's coming up together, and like all you, know, you want to raise everyone. When we all succeed, like that's kind of like where we want to be. Yeah, I mean, it's like we talked about responsibility, um, and that's I think another one of the responsibilities as a mural artist is like there's always going to be kids younger than you that really want to learn, and like maybe not even kids younger than you, just like people who just don't have the experience that you have. And I think it's a responsibility to go out there and kind of like let them know that like, hey, this is this is how I approach it. It's not maybe it's something that'll work for you. Maybe you're gonna come up with a better way to do it. But like, these are the things that I did to get to where I am. Yeah. I mean, guys like Pat Perry and like Jeremiah Britton, like they're they're easily approachable dudes, and they'll tell you these things. When I got out of CCS, Pat Perry was like, I just was like, hey, do you want to get a cup of coffee? And like, he literally was like. He's saying what to me then what I'm saying to you now is like okay well you just gotta find Jesse and Rula <laughs> and like that's like basically what it was boiled down to is like just find people who are advocating for the art and like you know just find your your local like artists who you respect and like buy them some coffee or like yeah. you know and just pick their brain and like everyone's a lot nicer and I think I mean I've definitely ran into some muralists who I'm like, what the fuck do you want from me? <laughs> and you just kind of delete email and move on. Yeah. But, like, that's by and large, like, the minority. And I think everyone wants to, like, see everyone kind of come up together, more or less. So we, when I'm on my tours, I talk about the mixture between quote unquote maybe a street artist and a graffiti artist. And you sort of, like, maybe touched on it a little bit. How how does that vibe mix, But you know, when you throw... And that might be more... Ed's looking away. <laughs> that might be more of a question for Ed. But is that planned when you, like, start looking at artists? Do you say, hey, man, let's put this person next to this person and, quote, unquote, see how it works out? Or do, is it just randomly just worked out? Yeah, I think it just kind of works itself out. I mean, I don't want to say there's disparity between the two. Um, I grew up kind of, like pounding graffiti artists like those are the, those are the things that were most attracted to me i was like some of those throw-ups like the old heads like four army like those guys i was in awe of like some of the stuff that they could do with just letters and it was specific to the shapes that they were making and the color choices but like when it applies to murals and street art there's like a there's sort of like a bad blood there because muralists and, and street artists are taking away the spaces that graffiti artists would normally occupy. Right, right. But I also have my friends who do graffiti, and when they come by the studio, I'm like, hey, I've got a ton of extra paint, just take it and like, just do your yeah. thing. Like, I, so I think it like, it doesn't have to be the bad blood that it no, has. No, it definitely does not. But there's definitely, this is, it's, it's two different people coming at a very similar thing in mm -hmm. a very different way, and there's a little bit of cross-pollinating. Mm -hmm. Um, but I definitely am very different. Like I didn't really look at graffiti. I 
painted graffiti growing up, but I painted like weird graffiti. My graffiti looked nothing like other people's graffiti, and it was, yeah. you know, very different. And um, I don't know. I just think there's like there's a lot of different perspectives on it. But I also think in when you kind of start m moving your way up in the world of street art, graffiti, whatever, people start caring less, and yeah. can we kind of blend a little bit more? Or more in the case of like Shepherd Ferry. <laughs> Absolutely, man. That was a shit show of a situation yeah. with Shepard when he came here. For those who don't know, he was actually paid to do commissioned art, and then a warrant was put out for his arrest for some of the art that he did here. So that is the, definitely the street art uh, mixing with graffiti. Um, do you guys think that school plays an important part in all this, or is graffiti or the streets, quote, you know, more of the education? <laughs> yes, to both. Uh, yes to both. I mean, depending on who you are, you yeah. know. Like, I'm definitely. I I have gone to a lot of school. Like, I went to four years of um, art school, and I, during the summer, I went to like ateliers to like learn how to paint and draw. On top of that, you know, so I may be an example of like not being able to learn on my own just because I was. Like, I started doing all this when I was 18, and like I think the older you are, maybe you have a little bit more like self-awareness of like what you want to do and you need less guidance. But I mean it all comes down to like drive, right? Uh, people like I don't know, like it's just if you want something bad enough and you're willing to put the time into it to become a master of your craft, then you don't necessarily need the schooling. Um, I'm not gonna say that CCS wasn't like influential in how I paint and how I approach every project because it was, but did I need it? Probably not, because I would have found this way anyways. You know, uh, it's hard to to sit back and and think when you have the schooling and think like, oh, I could do, I could have done this and not gone to school, but would I really have? I, who knows? I think you and I also came to our careers at different points in our life, so it's like. Yeah. For me, like, I was a little bit younger, and, like, I, I mean, I was figuring out life at the time, so, like, I think maybe if I were, if I were to give myself a little bit of advice to, like, my high school self, I would probably say, like... Well, give that advice. That was my next question. Yeah. If there was, you know, a, a kid coming up who was thinking about this path, what would you say? I would say take a year off between high school and college, and, like, just, like, travel, and, like... And, and like maybe live on your own for yourself, like move, move out of your parents' house, like just like live life and like figure yourself out because when you know your life better and you're a little bit more responsible and you kind of know what it is that matters to you, you're going to make better art. And like I think a lot of people go to art school and go to like even college or whatever just because it's the thing to do and like they're, you're figuring out living on your own for the first time, you're figuring out like how to cook meals for yourself and like all, and living in a city for the first time and then on top of like learning how to paint yeah. and that's a lot to do all at once mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i would say the same exact thing like you take that year off you figure out who you are or not I don't know. yeah if you i mean if you're going into if you want to go into murals the or art even it doesn't have to be murals if you want to get your hands painted you have to surround yourself with people who are also doing that you can't live in a in a bubble and expect to make really good art and have yourself be the only critique this guy gives me the worst critiques i've ever received in my entire <laughs> life but i'm a better artist for that i mean he he is my competition and he is somebody that i respect like through and through because he tells me my art is trash so gross so i gotta i mean that leads. So, do you ever just tell him that it's trash just to make him work harder? Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm letting the secret out. Or do you, do are you just always being honest, or you just think he can go a little bit harder on this? So I'm just gonna press him. Yeah, I do. Like, I do. Want, I know that he can do like a lot, you know. And I've seen his art progress a lot. And like, I'm not always a dick about it. Like, you know, <laughs> like not always. Like, I, I recently saw like the painting that he just did for group opening. And I was like, that's amazing. And then like I bought it immediately. And then I like I'm curating an opening next year with some Detroit artists. And I was like, you will fit in this perfectly because, you know, but like I'm gonna make him send me all of his paintings and I'm gonna grill him the entire time. 
but like it's a little bit of yeah. Like I don't know. I just like I know that he, he's a great artist, and I want him to do. I mean, he'll think he do the same for me. I do. Yeah. I mean, like I I will tell Mike when he's when he's slacking. Yeah. When it's something that like he he knows that he's slacking on. And he just doesn't want to do. Yeah. And you have to like reinforce that a little bit. But yeah, there's like a there's a balance. You can't be a dick all the time. Oh, well, you could. <laughs> I mean, you really, really could. could. Yeah. I mean, I push the limit, so <laughs> trust me, I I'm trying that all the time thing, man. This is a rarity right now. <laughs> man, I love hanging out with you guys. What's next? Let's start, Ed. What's next for you, brother? Uh, I'm working on a lot of RFPs right now for um, some city governments out west of the state. Um, my work tends to lean towards wildlife and those western cities man they love their wildlife uh so i've been working on a lot of that i've got 12 12 by 12 panels that i've just bought so i'm gonna be cranking out a ton of smaller work and putting it up on my instagram so okay stay tuned okay michael how about you um i just wrapped up a opening of one extra that did like maybe two or three pieces available left um, and prints and then I'm just getting to work on the next opening with 1X Run um, really really I have about a quarter of it done I've just been in my studio like every day just I mean it's the weekend now I'm about to go over there right now and just get to work so you guys are staying busy in the COVID. That's one of the main other topics. Everybody, you know, it varies from artist to artist. Some some say they're not doing a lot of work, but you guys seem like you're not slowed down. The quote, Chiefy, you're getting money in a pandemic. Right. Uh, I am getting money in the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that guy was trapping out of his Airbnb, so he's like an inspiration to us all. I'm <laughs> saying, man. <laughs> Every day I quote Sheaf these days. I mean, I used to quote him all the time, but now every day something comes up that I'm like, man, if he's doing it, I got to get off my ass and get this paper, man. Absolutely. All right, fellas. Uh, I it, This was awesome. I, as I knew it would be, you guys, I can't wait to just kick it with you off this camera, man, because I bet when we're just hanging out in the office, it's a blast. You ever throw anything at each other? Uh, <laughs> Nice, man. Well, once again, fellas, uh, is there anything last words you want to end with on this? Uh, thanks to Rula and Jesse. Yeah. Like, I mean, the world to us. All right, fellas. Thanks again. Man, Murals in the Market Live, never disappointing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Your first twofer. Don't say I never did shit for you, all right? That's all I'm saying. Get back with me next week, next Saturday, 11 a.m. every week. Once again, you can book a tour. And if you're actually cool enough, maybe Michael, maybe Ed comes out on that tour. Maybe I can talk him into it. See you guys next week.